the week after Easter, we're going to be uh, beginning a new series called Giants, and we're going to be talking about overcoming adversity. In the first week that uh, we start that new series, the last week of April, we're going to be uh, having a special guest uh, come. Well, for the, it's a three-week series, and so for each uh, week, we're going to have a special guest come and share their testimony. And uh, the first week is a, a lady named Jennifer Hartzell, and she uh, is going to talk about her testimony. And she's been working with a, a group. They're, they're building it's the Miracle Point Playground is what they're going to be creating. And it's a playground that is literally designated for um, those with uh, special disabilities. And so we have a, a box up here that we're going to be uh, having up here for the next few weeks. We're going to be collecting money for uh, that playground because uh, it costs a lot, a lot of money. And uh, so we're going to be raising some money for that over the next few weeks. Um, so put your money up there whenever you get a chance over the next couple weeks. And uh, um, when she comes at the last week of April, we're going to hand her a check uh, from Trinity. Um, that's going to be wonderful. So keep that in your prayers. And, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm glad to be saved this morning. I'm glad to be saved. Um, seeing everybody come here together and, and um, work on this church yesterday was Something that was very special. It was very special. Um, nobody needed to... <laughs> it's hard to ask people to do anything. And uh, to see people not only do stuff, but they were doing it with a smile. And everybody was having a good time. And uh, it really showed me how much love that you have for this church. And it's not just the building that you love, but it's what the building represents. Amen. And um, if we want to be a praying fellowship dedicated to the ministry of Jesus Christ, you know, yesterday was a, an amazing an amazing first step in that process. and uh, But we're going through this Lent season, and I hope that everybody's hanging in there with what you gave up for Lent. I'm doing a pretty good job with the things that I gave up for Lent. In fact, I haven't told my wife this, but once once Easter's over, I may continue with my, you know, my sacrifice, because I'm doing pretty good. I say that, but we'll see. <laughs> I do miss the sweet nectar of Coca-Cola, but uh, <laughs> we've been in this series called Release, where we have been uh, looking at releasing the things that are stopping us from growing in our relationship with Jesus Christ. We've talked about releasing your arrival and releasing your reins and releasing your reputation, and today I want to talk about releasing your frame of reference. But before we get started, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear and gracious Father God, thank you for this glorious day that you have given us. Thank you, God, for allowing us to come together, God, and, and hear your word, God. I pray that you, you remove me from this pulpit, God, and let the Holy Spirit convict the hearts of everybody that is here today, God. Help us to remember to release our reference, God, and continue to be with us as we continue to be a church on the move. It's in Jesus' personal name that I pray. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles, I invite you to open it up to John chapter 11. John chapter 11. This is the story of the resurrection of Lazarus. And in this chapter, we get to see this story. And Martha and Mary is called on Jesus to heal their brother Lazarus, who was sick. And Jesus says his sickness is not going to end in death. And Jesus uh, is so confident in that that he's later going to see this sick brother Lazarus. But during this delay, Lazarus died. And when uh, Jesus finally came four days later, Lazarus had died and Martha comes running out of the house filled with agony and I'm sure anger. And she looks at Jesus and she says, Lord, you had, where, where have you been? If you had been here, my brother would not have died. See, this comment is something that I hear all the time uh, for different situations and for different circumstances. You know, uh, we say things like, why, God, did you not save them? Where were you, God, when I needed you the most? God, why didn't you stop this from happening? I heard the sermon that said everything's going to get better. Why hasn't it? Martha said, look, you said his sickness would not end in death. You, you see, God has a plan. And his plan is much bigger than our plan. He doesn't do things for the temporary moments of our life. But he does things with our eternity in mind. Let me be the first to tell you that no matter what you're going through in this life, God works all things for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Even though you're sitting there with an emptiness, you're sitting there with a broken heart. Even though you're sitting there with the fear of something you're about to face, I promise you God will work it 
together for your good, for your good. And when the Bible says that, he doesn't mean that he's going to shield you from all the evil. He's not going to shield you from all the from all the hurt and the pain and the suffering. Paul and Corinthians talked about that thorn in his side that was hurting him. And he asked God to remove it. God answered and said, My grace is sufficient for you. My, 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 uh, my power is made perfect in your weakness. In August, I was about to sign a contract for at a church that the church had, I would say, probably unlimited funds. And uh, something just did not feel right. Something didn't feel good about it. And, and uh, it didn't work out. And, and I was sitting there the day after that it didn't work out. And I said, you know, I work, I'm going to leave this church. I was sitting there and I thought to myself, why? Why did God put me through this? The trenches that I've been through for the last year and a half at this church trying to progress in ministry. Why did he stop me and, and, and put me right back where I started in ministry? I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure it out. And, and, and looking back today, God was closing doors in Alexandria to open up doors here in Fountain. And it's a, a wonderful thing to think about. Because sometimes we get caught up in the moment. We get caught up in the, the struggle. And if you told me a year ago that I'd be in the town that I love the most, <laughs> in the church that I love the most, I wouldn't have believed you. I wouldn't have believed you. I was looking at old uh, photos that we have here at the church, and, and I stumbled across a couple where I was like, I was probably 12 years old and bald. <laughs> See, my dad had one haircut that he did for us. Okay. <laughs> he didn't know how to give us haircuts, but he knew how to just shave it all off. And <laughs> every month we had to go to the bathroom, and we did it by order of, uh, of uh, oldest to youngest. So Adam would get his haircut first, and then uh, Aaron, and then me. And so by the time it got to me, the, the razor was hot. <laughs> it was a mess. So I'd be screaming and crying and... And so I would freak Asa out, and so Asa would get, get, they wouldn't do Asa. They'd be like, oh, it's too hot for Asa, but... <laughs> That's ultimately why I keep my hair, because I'm afraid of, of razors. All right. <laughs> I'm a But we have to release our frame of reference. We have to release our frame of reference, because our attitude of where we are in our season of life is temporary. When we think of the struggles that we're going through, but we're, when we want things and how fast we want God to do things in our life, a lot of times it doesn't match God's plan for our life. God is good. God is perfect. He never fails. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Pastor Matt Chandler once said, Would it not be the kindness of God to allow you to endure some of your greatest fears and your worst struggles, to get to the other side of those fears and those struggles, and realize that they can no longer control you? Today, as we talk about releasing your frame of reference, we're going to be talking about the fact that sometimes life stinks. Sometimes life stinks. But God always hears us. And we have to come out of our frame of reference and understand that when it comes to God, He is not stuck on the here and now, but He has our eternity in mind. So let's all stand for the reading of God's holy word. We're going to be looking at John chapter 11, verses 38 through 46. John chapter 11, 38 through 46. So Jesus, again, being deeply moved within, came to the tomb. Now it was a cave, and a stone was laying against it. And Jesus said, Remove the stone. Martha, the sister of the deceased, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be a stench, for he has been dead four days. And Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they removed the stone. Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but because of the people standing around, I said it, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. The man who died came forth, bound hand and foot with wrappings, and his face was wrapped around with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who came to Mary and saw what he had done believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them the things which Jesus had done. May God bless reading this holy word. You may be seated. Sometimes the frame is more important than the picture. Framework is important. 
One thing that I've noticed in the last couple years of, of, of our marriage, uh, my wife starts fitting in more words into one sentence. I don't know how she does this. And so Friday, she, Friday she goes off of work and she says, Abram, you need to give the kids a bath. I said, no big deal. But then she starts talking more, right? But you got to do this and do this. And don't forget about this and that. And also this and that. The way, my, the way my brain works, it doesn't, it doesn't comprehend all that stuff. I got a million, I have every day planned out for, through August in my head. Thank you. And so, every day is planned out. So when she starts filling in words, it doesn't comprehend. And so I go give my boys a bath Friday night, and I'm sitting there, and, and uh, sure enough, there's no shampoo. So I text her, honey, I don't, where is the shampoo? She said, I told you this before I left. <laughs> I had to the shampoo because I cleaned the bathroom. I said, oh, okay, I remember. And so when we get done with the bath, I go and grab the towel. The towel's right in the towel's in the place that they're I said, honey, where's the towel? I told you this before I left. <laughs> I did the laundry and I pulled them up. I just didn't get to the brain them up. Then right before bed, I go to brush her teeth. Their toothbrushes weren't upstairs. I said, honey, <laughs> where is the toothbrush? And she said, uh, we, we had to brush our teeth downstairs. They're downstairs. I told you this before I left. <laughs> and I explained to her the next day, if you would have framed it better, if you would have framed the, 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 the sentence better, I maybe would have been able to understand everything that you told me. When it comes to my kids, my mom will ask them what they want for lunch. And so when they say ice cream, and she said, we can't have ice cream, they get upset with my mom. I tell my mom, you have to frame the question better. You can't ask them what they want for lunch. You just say, hey, peanut butter jelly time. That's what they're going to get. And this morning, I want to focus on your frame of reference. We are used to thinking of life in terms of fixed beginnings and fixed ends. But the story of Jesus caused us to throw away our frame of reference and embrace ours with God's larger vision and eternal life that begins here and now. Jesus wept at, at, at Martha and Mary and the struggle that they were feeling. He, was, he wept at their, at their heartache. Jesus cries when we cry. And he hurts when we hurt. But he didn't dwell on those emotions. Why? Because there is a bigger plan. So even though Jesus was deeply moved, life didn't stop. Although Mary and Martha were mourning at the loss of their brother, Jesus knew that God had the final say. One of the great things that I love to do is, is take my boys and, and we make cookies. It's one of my funnest activities to do with them. And, and the only issue is sometimes I have to substitute uh, some of the ingredients because I don't know where everything is in the kitchen. So no milk that day. May have to put in some Kool-Aid, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but no joke, so cinnamon is my go-to substitute uh, powder, if you know. No sugar will put cinnamon in there. And uh, what happens is, what happens is the cookies don't always look like cookies. And they don't always taste like cookies. Regardless of my best intentions, sometimes it does not work out. Then. And sometimes in our own lives, we start out with the best intention. When it comes to our relationships and our churches and our habits and our routines, we start out with the best intentions. And we put every effort into it that we may put into it. But sometimes the reality is life sometimes stops. A few years ago, I was working and I heard over the radio that a college student from Thomas More passed away in an ATV accident. And uh, when, you're on, when you're listening to the radio all the time, you don't think too much about news stories, but it was kind of a heartbreaking story. And, uh, a couple minutes later, Becky called me and says her cousin passed away in an ATV accident. It was, it was him on the radio. And uh, it's, in those, it's in those moments where life stinks. Life doesn't make any sense. Uh, it's one of those moments where you start to question things. And I can honestly say that I, I, I was thankful for my relationship with God, because it was in those moments where uh, He is the only hope when everything is hopeless. The gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, has taken on such a deeper meaning with, with me and, and Becky because uh, it's gone through, it's been there with us uh, through the pain of loss. And I'll never forget the, that, that during this time I, I stumbled across a verse in Psalms 34 18 that says, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. 
and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Sometimes life is hard. And sometimes life stinks. And in this passage, we know that Jesus was deeply moved by the hurt that Martha and Mary were feeling over the loss of their brother. But at the same time, he goes to the tomb and he issues a command. Look at verse 39. Jesus says, remove the stone. And Martha does something that we normally do when we're not too happy with the command. Right? Sometimes we get so caught up in our, in our frame of reference that we lose sight of our reason. And then listen, Martha wasn't wrong in what she says. She says, Jesus, if you had been here, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And she's sitting there going, look, Jesus, he's been in here for four days. He has been in here for four days. He is going to stay. She wasn't wrong about that. A lot of times we aren't wrong at the fact that sometimes life stinks. That sometimes life doesn't go according to our plan. You know, after uh, my sophomore year of going to KCU, I was put on what they call academic suspension which means Abram didn't go to class. <laughs> what they don't tell you is when you don't go to class and you get put on academic suspension, you can't go to any other, no other college will accept you. And uh, it was hard to get a job was during the recession, if y'all remember that time. And uh, it was, a, it was a, one of those moments where life stunk, and you believe it. Listen, I told God that it stunk too. You know? Every day I woke up and I told God how much life stunk. And... Uh, there's something I did that I really would encourage everybody to do. I, whenever life gets a little hard, I, I write down when I'm going through that hardness, right? When I'm going through that tough time. I write it down. So in two, two, three years later, I look back and I go, really, Abram? You were really worked up about all that? Uh, and I would encourage you to do that because it's a, good, it's a good exercise. But when I look back now at that year, which it really was a bad time in my life, but I see the lessons it taught me. And the path that God was leading me towards. And I look back and I say, okay, now it makes sense. At the time it didn't, but now it makes sense. And Martha was correct in the fact that Lazarus was in the tomb dead for four days and it was going to stink. But Jesus stops her and says, did I not say to you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. And recognize this. He doesn't say you're going to see the glory of God and then you'll believe. He says, if you believe, then you'll see the glory of God. Sometimes we want, we want to see the glory of God. We want to see the miracles take place. Then we will believe. God, give me a sign. Then I will go to church. God, give me a sign. And then I'll start going, believing and reading my, my this. But God says, believe first. And then you will see the glory. We need to believe that, that all it takes is the faith the size of a mustard seed to move mountains. Nothing is too extreme for God. No situation, no circumstance, no tragedy is too much for God to handle. And this morning, I truly believe that God is wanting this verse right here spoken directly to some of us who is going through situations where you're doubting God to get you through it. And he's literally saying, did I not say to you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? We serve a supernatural God, a God of the impossible, a God who always hears us. Let's bring me to my next point. God always hears us. Look at verse 41. So they removed the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. So we know that God hears us. We know that God hears us before we even have to say anything. There is nothing hidden from God. David says, even before a word is on my tongue, you know it. And Jesus says, God, thank you that you heard me. Do you thank God before the miracles happen in your life? Before God opens the next door in your life, are you praising him in the hallway? God, I don't know why this is happening in my life, but I'm going to thank you anyway. The Bible tells us in all things, give thanks for, to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And Jesus continues in 42. He says, I knew that you always hear me. I knew that you always hear me. Even when I'm weak, even when I'm mourning, even when I'm happy, even when I'm sad, I know that you always hear me. But because of the people standing around, I'm going to say it out loud. Sometimes we need to praise God out loud so the people around us see us praising God. When things are tough, praise God and watch the people react. When things are going great, praise God and see how people react. Everything that Jesus did while on this earth was done with purpose. Everything that he did. He didn't just do things for the fun of it. He did everything with purpose because Jesus could have said, look, remove the stone and come on out, Lazarus. He didn't have to say, you know, God, you always, he didn't have to say all that stuff. But he did. He said, thank you, God, for hearing me. I know you always hear me. 
And I want everyone around me to hear this. Because A, you always hear me. And B, you're the one that's sitting. Because what I'm about to do, he says, what I'm about to do, only the Son of God can do. He also knew some of them were going to run the Pharisees out. I, I really, really thought he knew that. Sometimes life stinks. But no matter how bad life gets, God always hears us. And because he hears us, he is crying out to us to come out. Look at verse 43. We, when he said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Part of being a, a parent, I believe, is teaching your kids life lessons. And uh, lately Isaiah has been building uh, cities with his blocks. He, 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 can build a, he can build a new York city in about 15 minutes flat. It's impressive. He, he, got, he had all his barns and his toys and his trucks and he literally will, the whole playroom will be turned into a city. It's amazing. And uh, him, and, him and Micah the other day were, were building the city, and, and he, he made it into a circle all around him and Micah, this big city. And, and uh, Micah was playing all fine and dandy until he looks up and he realized he was stuck in the middle of all these toys. And he loses all frame of reference, right? He loses his, his sense of reason. And he starts going to a panic attack. He starts crying. Daddy, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Now me, I'm looking, I go, you're not stuck. Step over the barn with the dinosaurs in it, and you'll get out of there. Real simple. But in his mind, he was stuck. So often in our own lives as Christians, we feel like we are stuck. We feel like we can't get out and understand that we serve the one who can do all things. We serve the one who has a plan that is bigger than ours. What is keeping you from being the person that you want to be? What is keeping you from being the person that God wants you to be? We have to stop living in our fear and our grief. I think Jesus wants to call you out of that tomb and unbind you and set you free. But too often we get stuck in this frame of reference where we try to rationalize the state that we are stuck in. But after Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, the man who had died came forth, bound hand and foot with wrappings, and his face was wrapped around with cloth. And Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. As he comes walking out wrapped with the wrappings of a dead man. And he smelled like a dead man. He was a dead man until Jesus spoke. He says, unbind him and let him go. When you get used to being in that tomb, you get in the, it starts to become your comfort zone. When you get used to being in that struggle, it becomes your comfort zone. And whatever is holding you back, you have to release it. It takes a risk to answer the call that Jesus uh, gives us to come out and hear him say, unbind us. If he can raise Lazarus from the dead, he can free us from whatever is holding us back from our experiencing the full miracle of God. But it has to take effort on our part. It has to take us to release our frame of reference, to come out of the grave, to come, to, to come out of our mindset that all is lost. And pay attention, look how this ends. Therefore, many of the Jews who came to Mary and saw what he had done, believed in him. Everything that Jesus did on this earth had purpose. And that purpose was so that he would be known. This is the problem that we get into with Christianity. Because like I said last week, we're, we sometimes are very self-centered in our lives. We come to church looking for a blessing. What is God going to do for me? Is this sermon that Abraham's going to preach going to relate to me? What am I going to get out of coming to church? Let me tell you this, God does miracles in our lives. He's doing a miracle every single day that we wake up. The situations that we're in, that we, even the ones we wish we might not be in, are to glorify God. But lots of times, we receive miracles and we give God no praise. We give God no thanks. We give God no recognition, no credit. But everything that he does is for his glory. When you're broken, can you still give God praise? When you feel like you can't go on, can you still give God thanks? On Wednesday, we talked a little bit about, about struggle, and uh, we went a little off topic, but uh, that's where we went. And uh, Dee said something that, was, that really stuck with me, which is, in those moments of those struggles, that's when you grow. In those moments where you feel like you are, are in this bubble and you can't move, those are where your strength, where your faith is strengthened. If God gave us everything we always wanted, we wouldn't recognize him for the blessing. If God gave us everything that we, we always wanted, we wouldn't look to him when we need something. During that time, I was put on academic suspension. Uh, couldn't get into another college. Couldn't find a job. And uh, that summer, Aaron was in his bad wreck. I don't know if you all remember Aaron in that wreck. 
his body was broken. He was in the hospital for a couple months. And my mom and my dad had to go to the hospital. They had to be by his side. And so uh, because I was on academic suspension, I was the one that had to take care of the siblings, our three younger siblings. And at the time, I was upset about it because I'm like, oh, man, I got to get a job. I got to get out of this house was my mindset. When I look back, I say, you know, God knew that my parents had to be there apparently. parents. And God knew that I needed to be there for my little siblings. Everything that God does is for a reason. Even when I was, felt like, and it was a time, it was a, it was a time that really did stink in my life. But I'm so glad that I was able to be there. And I was glad for those moments because that, I can look back at that time in my life and say, that's where I grew up. Those are where I started to learn that it was time to grow up where you're not in college anymore. And uh, as soon as Aaron came home and he started to recover, that's when I ended up getting a job at Walmart. I got accepted at Gateway. And life started to turn around. And, and uh, you know, I was looking back at, the old, at some of the old journal entries. And it's just funny because that was where it was. I was so thankful. I'm so thankful that God took me through those hard times in my life. The times in my life that it wasn't easy. But I had no idea where God was going to lead me. And I'm so thankful that he took me through those. Sometimes life stinks. But I can promise you God is always there. I can promise you God always hears. And he is calling out today to come out of your frame of reference and into the reality of the wonders of his love and his blessings. Just like Jesus called out to Lazarus to come forth, he is calling you out today to receive him in your heart, to make that profession of faith, to walk into the kingdom of, of God and I don't want anybody to walk out of these doors without knowing that truth. So as we close in a word of, uh, in a word of invitation here, make sure that you know where you're going to end up. Get out of that frame of reference where your life is just temporary. And understand that God has to move a lot of parts and pieces in everybody's lives for his plan to, to work out perfectly. Everything that God does is perfect. Believe it. Let us pray. During Christian's Father God, we thank you, God, for your perfection. We thank you, God, for your plan. We thank you, God, for this struggle. Because it's in those struggles that we learn to rely on you even more. We learn to give you the praise when we get out of those struggles, God. God, if there's anybody here today that has not received you as our Lord and Savior, God, I pray that they come forward and do that. God, I know there's somebody here that is hurting and are struggling, God, to move on. I pray that you allow them to come forward and let us pray with them. God, be with us as we enter into the altar, God. Watch over us, God, as we begin another week. Continue to watch over this church, God, as we continue to be dedicated to your Son. Watch over everything that we do, God. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Stand amazed. <laughs>
time in our relationship. No. Young trash. Uh. It's one thing to lose a grandparent, it's another thing to lose a brother and a cousin. Uh. Makes you question the name. Through all those tragedies, I, I don't know where I would be if I didn't have a church family that was always behind me. I think we take for granted in our society the impact the church has had in our community. I think our churches take for granted. Sometimes our churches get competitive with each other. That's not what we're here for. We're here to glorify God, to encourage one another, to lift each other up. If you're not a part of the church, I encourage you to be a part of the church. We are uh, building something that's so wonderful. As a pastor, I know I can go to any one of you guys and talk to you guys and share my struggles. Our love is for you. We love you. We want your life to end in happiness. We want you to be able to know that when you die, you're going to be right up there singing God's praise. We need to do everything with eternity in mind. We should have purpose to save the law, to save our friends and our neighbors. So we sing one more verse. If you want to make that decision, please come